And I want to spend a moment and talk to each one of you and how you need to understand that you are a projection of your life. Really, what does that mean that I'm a pro projection of my life? And as you think, so you create, so you experience. And it's time for us to begin to look at what's going on on the planet right now. But more importantly, what's going on with each one of us individually? Where are our thoughts? What do we think about ourselves? Where are we going? What are we accomplishing? And what direction do we need to take? And most importantly, how can we find happiness in our life? Our reason for being here on this planet is multifold. But one of them is to have love and joy and happiness in our life. And you know what? We are so busy working on love and joy and happiness, but we're looking externally. We're looking for things we buy to make us feel good. For people to say, oh, you got a new car, a new house. Oh boy, you're really special. And it makes us feel good, but only temporarily. Or perhaps we're looking at what others have and don't appreciate what we have. Or perhaps we forget that we are the soul, S-O-U-L, and S-O-L-E creator of our lives. So if we look at whatever our projections are, we're looking outside of ourselves instead of looking within ourselves. And when you look deep within, what do you see? Well, most human beings go, well, I'm too fat, too fall, tall, I'm aging, I got wrinkles, I got gray hair, and whatever it may be. Or maybe they may say I'm not successful, or people don't appreciate me, or whatever it is. So whatever you're projecting, you're experiencing. But this is really ingenious, because it's meant to call to your intention, what am I doing? What am I creating? What direction am I taking? What are my belief systems? Why am I doing this self? Why am I doing this? And what you're doing it is for you, either you're listening to your ego, or you're trying to make yourself feel better. You're trying to make yourself feel better because you're projecting and all the negative fears of your life. And that can create quite a thought. I'm not tall enough, rich enough, successful enough. I don't know how you measure success. You measure success with money? Great. You know? So you accumulate all this wealth. And the thing I always like to say, you know, when the ancient pharaohs in Egypt, when they died, they took all their wealth with them, they put them in a pyramid, and then they took enough money to be able to cross the river Styx and the afterlife, and then they can buy their way back. Well, you know who got the money and the wealth? The grave robbers. Hello? So why are not we taking time to project this moment what brings us love and joy in our life? You know, I gave you that quote earlier from Howard Gossie. There is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. There is only the now and the forever. You notice I emphasize the word now. So look about yourself and say, what makes me feel good now? Oh, I love to see the sunrise. Look at the birds. Oh, I had a great meal. Oh, I just got a chance to relax. Or I saw this little baby laugh or smile or change someone's life by complimenting them. What are you doing now? Why are you focusing in the past? And why are you focusing in the future instead of enjoying the moment. What if everybody on this planet enjoyed the moment? When you enjoy something, what do you feel? You feel lighter, you feel happier. The neural pathways of your body produces the hormones that gives you joy and happiness. And you're only focusing on that moment and enjoying it on the moment. So in teaching the class of the manifestation prophecies, and the one thing that I've been teaching, I remember in the past life that I went to the mystery schools, not all of some of what they taught me and taught me how to manifest. I remembered that part of it was to live in joy and happiness. That was so important. As a human being, we're always looking for the next step, the next thing we're going to do. But here's what creeps up in your mind. How am I going to do it? How's this going to happen? I don't know. Probably will never happen. Oh, it's impossible. It's too difficult. And so when a person says to me, I can't, I can't, I can't do it, my answer to them is, you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't. Think about that. Sometimes we challenge ourselves to overcome obstacles. The only reason these obstacles are created, which 
we created it ourselves. We either put ourselves in that position to have an obstacle, or we create it out of our thoughts by the law of electromagnetic attraction. Remember what you think you create, what you create, you experience. So you enjoy, you enjoy yourself. Then you have your doubt. You bring it into your life, and you have to find a solution. But here's the secret: there's always a solution to everything, and there are two ways to finding a solution. You can do it the hard way, or you can do it the easy way. If you fight it, it's the hard way. If you reject it, it's the hard way. If the easy way is say, what am I supposed to learn? How can I grow from this? And they ask for two inner source guidance how to overcome it, and bang, the solution comes forward, and you're over it quickly, rapidly, and immediately. See, whatever you're projecting in your life, you are creating everything that brings you love and joy and happiness, and everything that limits you. And you know my motto: you are unlimited, and truly, you are unlimited. And again, I want to reiterate, reiterate that when I was talking to the true source in my early days. I said, you know, why do we humans make a big deal of spirituality? And the answer is because the humans have to make it complex. It is so simple, Michael. But no, we have to have all these things going on to be able to justify what's going on. You know, one of the things, and I wanted to bring this up, is they talk about vision boards, and we have to understand how the conscious and subconscious mind works. So I, I'm personally, do they work sometimes? Is it necessary? No, but it's a great way of selling people concepts and ideas. But yet, in the ancient mystery schools, they didn't have vision boards, and they manifested great and wonderful things. And the truth of the matter is, you are unlimited. Whatever you think you are creating, 24/7, and you know, 94% of our thinking. Comes from our subconscious mind, which thinks in black and white. Conscious mind comes from black, white, and gray. So all these limitations or positivities we put in our mind comes from the subconscious mind, which is then tied to the ego. And it's like there's a relationship for a relationship for a relationship for a relationship. Instead of just saying, you know what, I'm worthy, and I can do anything I want, and I'm going to project love and joy and happiness. So if you project that, everything that you can conceive in your mind that brings you love and joy and happiness, prosperity, abundance, perfect health, great relationships, fun, vacations, everything, your higher self, your soul knows exactly, and over soul knows exactly. So my message to you this evening is, you know what you think you create, what you create, you experience. Thoughts are things. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? And so many times I've expressed to you by going five, four, three, two, one, cancel, cancel, cancel. When you have a negative thought, what you're doing is re- is disconnecting your left brain with your right brain. You're going to the amygdala. Now you have to replace it with a positive thought because there's no such thing as a vacuum in the universe. So five, four, three, two, one, cancel, cancel, cancel. Sun is shining. I'm happy. I'm joyous. Whatever. But you are constantly creating and co-creating. You're creating with your thoughts. You're projecting your thoughts. You're co-creating by bringing in negativity or attracting those people that think the same way. Independent thinkers, think about that. Independent thinkers, there are very few, and most of them are rejected. Why? Because the ego says you have to have empirical proof that this is so. That's the ego. When certain things just are, and that's our greatest challenge, is letting the ego controlling ourselves, always looking for proof, 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 and you 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 demonstrate proof, you give proof, and they'll say, well, it's not enough, that's not right, I need more, I need more, I need more, I need more, and that's what we're projecting, because we never feel it's enough. We have so much doubt that's been created by society. It's like you know, there's no afterlife. Nope. Some religions teach that when you're dead, you're dead. Well, I tell you, have any of you had relatives and say, my aunt or my uncle, they've come to visit me, or my、uh, you know, my husband or child that passed away or whatever, and that you know, I'm getting ready to cross over. They say it over and over just before they cross over, and of course, 
there's no explanation for it because they don't believe in it. And I remember there's a very famous man, and he was embraced by the light, I can't think of his name, but he talked about he went to the other side and he came back. And the psychologist said, well, that's just the brain dying from the inside out and looks like a tunnel and that's all that's happening. And he said to her, I've had three near-death experiences. How many have you had? Well, she said, none. So he said, what makes you an, ex an expert in it? So think about those things. So a lot of people say that, and it's like, well, it must be true. Because, you know, if you repeat a lie enough, people will believe it. And if you repeat the truth enough, people will believe it. So it's high time that we search deep within us, look at our projections, look at what we're thinking about, and realize that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And just because everybody said that's the way, doesn't mean that's the only way. There are many different ways. You know, you could live in Boston, where I came from, and come out to Seattle. I could go straight line, I could go down to Miami, up to Michigan, over to Canada, back down to Texas, over to California, and come to Seattle. Or I could take I-5 or I-80 and come straight out here. See, there are many different ways to the path. And all I'm about is the direct path. Set aside all the fluff, and it's time to realize that you are unlimited and that you're creating your life. And it's time to reject what makes you joyous and happy.